This is the first video I'm going to make. I will make at least two others on how you can frame a subfloor foundation with three different types of sheathing. The first one will be um, with some beams and two by six tongue and groove sheathing. Now these are old methods as they're not real common but I wanted to just give you an idea for those people who are remodeling their houses, um, thinking about building a house or even some um, having some problems with your home, the floor sheathing, stuff like that. To give you a little better idea how it was built and this might give you a better idea of how you can uh, make the necessary repairs. Obviously, I'm not going to cover all the details, but this will give you a, a pretty good idea. Let's start with the piers there, the concrete piers, be the um, main structural supports for the interior of the floor. And you, you might have more, you might have less. It just depends on the size of the house. I'm not going to go into details, like I said, because... Uh, it varies the size of the house, the size of the po the, the beams, uh, the footings, stuff like that. So I'm not going to just kind of, again, just a basic idea here. Let's take a look at the beam where it connects to the stem wall. You could have something like this where you have a beam and a hanger, but most older homes, the beams usually sit in a pocket, usually a little um, cubby hole notched out of the concrete um, stem wall and basically this is how you're going to start the sheathing and I believe the brakes are every two boards on this so you'd have something like this where you're going to have uh, maybe two 16 footers on each side and then you're going to have the 16 footer in the center something like that and you can see here where it's broken the two, there's two solid, um, two solid boards and then a break. And again, this is self-explanatory. The next picture is going to bring this one home. Ain't no doubt about that. Here's what it would look like after it was completed. And again, you're going to need to check with your local building codes. Things might change. You know, uh, the structural engineer might have other requirements. You might be able to go three boards, might be able to go four, bo four boards. They might want one board to break every, every board. And this is tongue and groove, um, two by six. So it will lock into the other pieces, giving you a nice solid floor. Now I have seen the beams when we go back to the span of the beams. I've seen them as far as eight foot wide, eight foot apart, eight, eight foot on center, I should say. And um, so that's a big span for something like this. I don't know if uh, two by six by itself would span that far, but uh, with the tongue and groove, it definitely uh, definitely can and really does create one heck of a sturdy floor. I, I am shocked. I do built a room addition years ago and had a few pictures. Here's what they look like if you can see the uh, subflooring and the beams that they were that they used kind of give you a better idea how it was constructed. Now here's something you're going to see every once in a while. You look in there's cement on the boards. I don't know if you can see it. The boards look gray and uh, that's because they were used for the forms. They used them for the concrete forms and then um, stripped the, when they stripped the forms, they used them for the sheathing. That was real common uh, years ago. You'll see that with one by six um, diagonal sheathing also. That wraps up this video. I'm going to put uh, another link to the next video. I, I know I'm going to make at least three videos on this just to give, uh, like I said, give you a better idea how these things are built and what you might be dealing with. Um, if you're doing any types of repairs.